I would like to welcome all of you. Uh, after a long break, it's good to be back at the IIC physically. And we have a very distinguished panel, and I hope uh, uh, I hope those uh, who in the month of April and October had ventured into POK and had given certain statements uh, will obviously take note of this panel. Uh, so we have uh, uh, Bajan Pondaji, National Vice President of the BJP, former member of parliament, a uh, public intellectual in his own standing, uh, and an erudite political activist. Wonderful to have him here with us. He's done a lot in forwarding uh, the nationalist uh, narrative at various levels. We have Ambassador Dinkar Srivastava, the author of the book, uh, with us here today, a veteran diplomat and uh, uh, an erudite as well as an academic diplomat also. And thank you so much for bring, coming out with this book. I'll give a brief introduction after this. We have General Lieutenant General Atta Hasnainji, member of the NDMA, and I think he doesn't need an introduction, and especially when it comes to Kashmir, we don't have to introduce him. But he has contributed in shaping a lot of the narrative on Kashmir that we have been articulating and advocating. And many of us here, I'm sure, would agree with me when I say that we have derived and we continue to derive a lot of inspiration from him. I have my friend here, Dr. Ashok Behuria of the Manohar Parikar IDSA, who has immensely contributed to our understanding of Pakistan and of POK, and has done it very solidly and silently. And uh, I'm extremely grateful to him for having taken time out, as I'm grateful to the others, because each one of them bring a perspective which we need to keep uh, reiterating and going deeper into. Uh, friends, I think we meet at a very interesting time. Uh, yesterday was the 75th year of the irrevocable, permanent, irrefutable accession of GNK to India. And uh, just a day after the 75th anniversary, we are here now uh, trying to discuss our next agenda. That is the other side, which is, uh, you know, which, uh, the unfinished agenda which remains. And I am extremely happy, and it is to be noted, that the demonization of Maharaja Hari Singh is also being reversed, and Sandhya Jain is here. She was one of the first ones to record and to write, challenging the predominant narrative of a hesitant Maharaja Hari Singh. And uh, I think yesterday, uh, Union Law Minister's article, Kiran Riju's article, on uh, the accession, where clearly uh, it was clearly shown that it was in July 1947 that Maharaja Hari Singh actually repeatedly offered to accede to India. But that was finally accepted on 27th October 1947 when uh, the raiders were already knocking at Srinagar's gate. I don't want to get into that narrative, but uh, we are quite well uh, informed about that and there's a change that is taking place. Now very interesting, I'd like to highlight today when Prime Minister Narendra Modi ji was addressing the Chintan Shibir of uh, organized by the Union Home Ministry, he made a very interesting point. He said, there are anarchists or terrorists of two kinds, ones that take up guns and the other who take up pen, who take up the pen. It's very important, I think we have gathered here today to challenge that anarchist, the anarchist of the pen. And the flawed narratives or the narratives that are to be suppressed and the narratives that are to be promoted are primarily <coughs> decided by that genre. And I think Dinkar Srivastav's, Ambassador Srivastav's book is a resounding response to that suppression of a certain narrative that has taken place, especially on the on the OP. Uh, the very short time that I have with me, I'd like to just briefly uh, give you an introduction of the book. We have to keep in mind that this book raises a number of issues. 
The thrust of the book is on contemporary development, and this includes the debate on Shimla Agreement in Pakistan National Assembly in 1972, and then this was followed by the adoption of the Azad Kashmir Interim Constitution Act 1974, etc., etc. Pakistan raises the JNK issue in every international forum. However, it seldom talks about the part of the state that it has occupied. Now, the question that has been asked in the last few days, people asked me the, the title of, about the title of the book. And I think there's a very important paragraph here. Pakistan's civilian and military rulers have alike proclaimed their commitment to the Kashmir cause. But they talk of Kashmir as a foreign policy issue or as an expression of the ideology of Pakistan. They seldom discuss the part of the state that they have occupied. That is the forgotten Kashmir that this book is about. And this is the forgotten Kashmir. The book looks at the developments in UK, Gilgit, Baltistan in terms of the aspiration of its people and Pakistan's international commitments rather than India's yardsticks. The trends in Pakistan's polity are used as the plane of reference to examine Islamabad's policy and actions in POK. This is the crux of the book and we'll hear it from the author himself. And uh, the sources that he has drawn from are impeccable and irrefutable. And that is what makes this entire study extremely different for uh, we have a very senior veteran diplomat here with Sumit Tol, and I think we we'll vouch for the uh, for the authentic authenticity of the book and the uh, veracity of the arguments that this book proffers. Uh, now, there are just two points that I am uh, wanting to make, and that's very interesting because in April, in uh, January 2022. And these are repeated requests that are publicly made from the other side to Prime Minister Narendra Modi <coughs> in India. In January 2022, we had the phenomen, phenomenon of a large number of families being thrown out of their homes in POK. And they appealing to Prime Minister Narendra Modi and saying, this is your land, please take care of us. Very interesting. Then we had the Somalia-born radical Islamist Congresswoman, Ilan Omar suddenly ventured into POK and then made a lot of promises there. And then in October, in August, interestingly she went in April, and in August 2002, this year, massive protests erupted in Muzaffarabad and other cities across Pakistan-occupied Kashmir against the Pakistan government's plan to bring in the 15th Amendment to fix the constitutional status. People were shot, they were butchered, and since July 1st, this was in August, since July 1st, women and children were sitting on the road for several days in the region, south shouting freedom slogans and demanding the army return to the barracks. Indiscriminate firing and use of force and the authorities did not obviously disclose the death toll. POK. In October, the Pakistan ambassador, US ambassador in Pakistan ventured again into uh, POJK. And uh, in October last week, uh, that was early October, and October last week again protests against Pakistan's occupation of POK erupted all across POK. It's another matter that uh, the, uh, the US ambassador Donald Blom had to be also issued a demarche because Biden said that Pakistan is the most dangerous country. So he was called and issued a demarche uh, earlier, uh, sometime uh, few days ago. So I think uh, I look forward to a very interesting discussion. And uh, obviously, Kashmir is an integral part of the foundation's agenda, named after Dr. Shamal Mukherjee. And uh, on 7th August 1952, when Lok Sabha was debating the motion regarding the state of Kashmir, a very interesting observation, as forceful as his personality, but as cogent as he was, Dr. Mukherjee reminded Nehru the only matter regarding which the dispute still continues is about the one-third territory of Kashmir, which is the occupation of the Kashmir. We say that Kashmir is a part of India. It is so. So, 
A part of India is today in the occupation of the enemy and we are helpless. Now, I would like to know from the Prime Minister, is there any possibility of our getting back this territory? We shall not get it through the efforts of the United Nations. This was in 52, he had already predicted. We shall not get it through peaceful methods by negotiations with Pakistan. That means we lose it unless we use force and the Prime Minister is unwilling to do so. Let us face facts. Are we prepared to lose it? I think that was very clearly answered by Union Home Minister Amit Shah in 2019, August, when he said, no, we are ready to give up our lives to get it back. And a few days ago, when Prime Minister Modi himself was addressing a gathering, he said, we want to develop our part of Kashmir in such a way that people in the other part of Kashmir would buy with each other to come and join us. I think there is a roadmap which is evolving and it's only the future which will really say how we move ahead. Thank you so much.